uh, we want to appreciate uh, everything and the presence of the Lord in our midst. And uh, all the things that uh, the Lord is doing for us in this hour. And uh, I just welcome all of us that uh, we may continue learning together in the School of Christ. Amen. And so uh, this is part two of the Christian walk, the duty of the congregation on the day of atonement. This is part two. We did yesterday uh, I mean, an introduction on it. The sanctuary message is so wide, as I said, and uh, uh, I just pray that it will be a subject of interest to all of us. And so I thank uh, the brother for the prayer, and uh, I just pray that the Lord may help me as I go through this so that it may be of benefit to all of us. And so after appreciating that prayer, I want us to continue from where we left. Yesterday, this is uh, where we left in GC 88.2. I said that uh, I'll try do some few quotes and then uh, starting from tomorrow, I can come back to the Bible. We, we introduce the sanctuary with the Bible. We travel a little bit in E.G. White writings and the pioneers, and then I just come back to the Bible and try to wrap up uh, my presentations as uh, the Lord leads. Now, I'll uh, request my timekeepers if there's uh, the time that is left, you will be able to tell me. From now on, I have 45 to 50 minutes. Amen. Yeah, so be courageous enough. I'll request one thing. This one, when we were in Uganda, Brother Wiki, you said something that really touched me. And it really made me uh, 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 examine myself. Brother Wycliffe said something when we were in Uganda, uh, when he was giving his testimony, he said, some of us, God has taken us from worse situations that if it is not by his grace at a small provocation, you will find out that we are not Christians. It's not a heavy, is that not a heavy statement? that God has taken people out of what? Worst places at a small provocation, you will find that they are not Christians. And so the reason I say this statement is this. Please put your phone on silent. I don't want provocation. I don't know where God took weekly from, but I know where he took me from. So please just let your phones be on silent. We don't want to provoke anyone. Amen. But more so, we don't want to provoke God. You can provoke me, but you cannot provoke God. He says in Jeremiah 3, it is to your own shame that you can try to provoke him. You see, I have never traveled in a plane. I hear people say that when you enter into the plane, they tell you, let your phone be on off mode because it can interfere with the towers for the plane to get the reception where it's going. I don't know if that is true or it's not. Those who have traveled in the plane, do you put your phones on plane mode? so that it may not interfere with the reception from the towers. Now, people will fear the plane falling by not receiving the reception from the towers, but they don't fear not getting the Holy Spirit, which is essential. And we are talking about Revelation 18, the power and the glory. Please, may the Lord bless you. Without a lot of things, let us go in the word of God. This is where we left yesterday, brethren and sisters. Those who will share the benefits of the Savior's mediation should permit what? Nothing to do what? To interfere with their duty to perfect what? Nothing today should interfere. You ask me, what about my wife? What about my child? 
it says your wife should not should interfere with your duty to perfect holiness. It says nothing, is it? Nothing should interfere with your duty to perfect holiness in the fear of God. The precious hours, instead of being given to what? Pleasure to display or gain seeking should be devoted to earnest, prayerful study of the word of what? Of truth. Are we together? Yeah, let us respond. The subject of the word and the word should be clearly understood by the people of God all need a knowledge of themselves of the word, position, and of the work of their great high priest. Give me my Bible. Otherwise, it will be impossible for them to exercise the faith which is essential at this time or to occupy the position which God designs them to fill. Thank you, Brother Jordan. Every individual has a soul to save or, uh, or to, to lose. Each case has... Each has a case pending at the bar of God. Each must meet the great judge face to face. How important then that, they, that every mind contemplate often the solemn scene when the judgment shall sit and the books shall be opened. When with Daniel, every individual must stand in his lot at the end of the days. This is where we left. And uh, this issue of understanding the position and the work of the high priest. We are looking at the duty of the congregation on the day of atonement. I want you to go with me to James chapter 5. Let us just look at James chapter 5 for a moment. If you reach there, you say amen. I want us to travel together. The book is what? James chapter 5. Now, I want you to observe some things that are happening in the book of James chapter 5, which are an indicator of the position of the high priest in the, uh, in the sanctuary above. Read together verse 1. Go to now what? Ye rich men weep and call for your miseries that shall do what? Come upon you. Your riches is done what? Corrupted and your garments are moth eaten. Your gold is done what? Your gold and silver is conquered, and the rest of them shall be what? A witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were what? Fire, ye have done what? Heaped treasure together for which days? And so when you see the movements of monopoly in the times that you are living in, you understand that you are in the beginning of the days. You are aware. In the last days when men are holding wealth, thinking that it can save them for the what? Perilous time that is coming. You are seeing, as we are seated here, a movement in this final arts history, people holding money and putting machineries in place to make sure that they are the only ones on the market and they have to put their regulations so that those who cannot meet them, they are faced out of the market. But you wonder what is happening on your TVs and on your radios, but the Bible tells you that we are in which days? The last days. And so these gigantic monopolies, these uh, 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 movements of taxes and hindering this and this, so that there will be no buying and sell, it is a measure that is an indicator of the last days. But as they do this, as they put uh, restraints on some issues, we are told something will happen. Verse 4, Behold, the hire of laborers who have reaped down your field, which of you is done what? Kept back by fraud, cried, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of what? Sabaoth. And so, apart from just restricting certain business line to some certain people and restricting certain riches, riches to some people. Also, we are told that the hires of people will be kept back by fraud. I know when we were in Uganda, we talked about this verse, about keeping, thing, keeping the hire of the laborers back by fraud. 
You here can't say that we do not have money to pay the workers. Where has the money gone? Those who studied financial matters. The money has been kept back in a reserve to do some business. And then they wait when there's recession and inflation. Then they release the money when the money cannot help you in anything. And so we have to study finances to understand why these things are happening. And as they do this, the people who are not converted, they will go to the road for rioting. And then we shall have these revolutions that you are seeing in every country. Right now we are looking in the Middle East and uh, in, in Europe and all that, and in Spalding and Magan, we are told that this king's intent is to overthrow each other, but the Lord will put a slack on them once or twice. Then in that time, the latter rain will fall on the people and they'll be prepared so that when the king set the wheels going, the people of God will be ready to be able to combat the issue. And so wherever we are seeing in the Middle East and in some parts of Europe is an indicator that the Lord wants to put uh, to give the people the latter. In, in fact, let us just read the, the statement in Spalding and Magan about uh, this slackness in Europe. These kings trying to topple each other. The book is uh, SPM. I want you to look at this statement in Spalding and Magan, page 2a. And for the benefit of the people, I'll put it on the screen. I saw in Europe, just as things are moving toward, there will be seemingly be a select slackening up how? Once or thus the hearts of the wicked will be done what? relieved and hardened but the work will not settle down only seem to for the minds of the kings and rulers who are intent on doing what overthrowing each other in the minds of the people to get into what ascendance and daniel chapter 12 verse 10 says that the wise shall understand but the wicked shall understand how many things none of these things and so whatever we are seeing in europe and middle east is an indicator to the people that these kings are angry, the nations are angry at each other, and soon to follow is the stupendous things of the final events where we are told that when these kings now begin their work, actually there will be a little time of trouble, then it morphs into a great time of trouble. But we are yet as if we are blind to the events that are happening uh, amongst us as a people. And so, uh, in James chapter 5, we continue reading that uh, the people are heaping up wealth for the last time, and there are revolutions that are to follow. But our main, main, main uh, intentions of reading this verse is this. You have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. You have nourished your hearts as in the days of slaughter. You have condemned and killed the just and doth not resist. Now look at verse 7. This is a common verse that we read, and we shall keep reading until Christ comes. Be what? Patient therefore, brethren, unto the what? Behold, the husbandman waited for the what? Precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it until he receives what? The early end. And now see how he connects farming with the work that is going on in the heavenly sanctuary. He, she, he says this. Be also what? Establish what? For the coming of the Lord does what? What was the context of James chapter 5? The game of monopoly, is it? Do we understand the game of monopoly? Others having and others not having. And so these are just the stages that sets in the reception of the early rain and the latter rain, the early rain which was poured on on the Pentecost, it comes to us again. And that is what is called actually the, 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 the showers of the blessings. What is the early rain that comes to the people of God in the end time? The revisiting of those truths that the apostles received. 
And then when they accept them, then they receive the latter rain. And so we must receive first what was received on the day of Pentecost, then we can receive the latter rain. God cannot bring on us the latter rain before we accept what the apostles taught. And whatever was given back in 1844. So the latter rain is coming to the people as little showers, then as latter rain. So he says that when you see these movements and we are seeing them already happening, and different laws are being passed so that it may restrict the movement and uh, the movement of peoples and the business of people, even the religious uh, movements of the people. All these things that you are seeing, vaccinations, you think that it's a, a normal thing, it's a, just a, a, a disaster of normal character, but it is to restrict the people for not going to preach in other countries. And the work that the church has failed to do in time of peace, you shall do it what? In time of trouble, and many will try to end, but they shall not end. Think about the parable of the five, uh, the five foolish virgins. That, um, you know, sometimes I say that the foolish virgins are really foolish when the Bible says that. There's no other name you can give them. They ask these guys who are wise. Tell us where there is the oil that we may go and do what? Which means they have the money to buy the oil prior. But they didn't buy. What were they waiting for? An emergency. Is it a time to prepare in the time of emergency? It is not in the time of emergency we prepare. So somebody is waiting here. When I hear the Sunday logo in America, then I can go to country living. I can support a ministry. That is when to buy a print. That is when to buy a computer for printing. My friend, we need repentance. Is it? The time of trouble is not the time of preparation, but the time to enter into the battle. And so this issue of mark timing God, you know, we are so good in mark timing God. And I hear the Seventh Day Adventists are people of the book. They can mark time God. They know the chronology of events more than God knows them. They don't think that God can decide the Sunday law doesn't start in America. And while we are waiting for the Sunday law to start in America, look at 60, page 17. Which I, I believe it has to start there because it's not a conditional prophecy, but I'm not God. God, God can change with these things. Uh, 60. Uh, Look at 60, page uh, 17, paragraph 1. It is amazing that we mark time God. But there's a point I want to pass across in this issue of uh, the duty of the congregation on the department. We shouldn't be waiting, brothers and sisters, until a crisis before we do something. We are told that uh, the lights we have done what? Upon the what? The third angel's message is what? The mark of the beast is exactly what it has been proclaimed to be. Do we believe that? Sunday sacredness? We know that the mark of the beast is Sunday sacredness. Is it true? This is a true light, and we cannot turn away from it. However, how many people turn away from it? Let them follow the fallen angels if they don't repent. If we don't keep the sphere that the Lord has put us in, and the truth, then... Just what happened to the fallen angels happens to us. And so it says, not all in what? Regard to this matter is yet, nor will it be until the, but a most solemn work is to be accomplished in what? So we have always believed that the mark of the beast is Sunday, that, but the things that enshrine the Sunday sacredness, do we know them? Do we know them? We will never know until the scroll does what? Unscroll, and it is unscrolling slowly. It, when you see vaccinations and all these things, the role, the, the role is being unscrolled, and we can understand the things that are really uh, 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 keeping in check the Sunday law. God is trying to speak to us something. And so we are told, 
that uh, B patient, verse 8, B also patient, establish your heart for the coming of the Lord draweth how? Nigh. And so we can understand as we are speaking in this room, the Lord is drawing how? Nigh because of the revolutions that we are seeing around us. There is nothing you can miss to know in Matthew chapter 24. The things that you are seeing prophesied are happening as we talk right now. Now look at verse 9. To, because our burden is to understand the position of the high priest and to exercise the faith that we should exercise at such a time. Is it true? Look, as the revolutions are happening, there is the outpouring of the early and the latter rain. But look at the position of the high priest. Look at your Bible in verse uh, 9. What does it say together? Grudge, not one, against another brethren, lest you be what? Behold, the judge seated still. They do to go into the most holy place or to come out. If the Lord is coming, is he entering inside the door or coming out? He is coming out. Can we be sure Christ is coming out? When the high priest on the day of atonement entered into the sanctuary, he held the bells on the hem of his garment. And when he went inside the sanctuary, the people who were in the camp could listen and hear the bells while he went into the sanctuary, is it? But then at some point, the bells disappeared as he was standing and doing the work. But when the high priest started coming from the, the, the most holy place, and he neared the people, did they hear the bells? Can we hear the bells of the high priest ringing? The events foretold in the prophecy reveals the bells of the high priest stepping from the most holy place. And we cannot mistake those sounds because they are the prophecies of the sanctuary. And so we need to be diligent students of the Bible to understand why, where the position of the high priest in this time that um, we are living in. And so that was just an introduction for that. So let's see where we can reach part two. We are told a clear understanding of the day of atonement. We continue in the Christian walk. The Christian life is not what? A modification or of the old, but a what? A transformation of nature. There is death to self and sin and a new what? Life altogether. This change can be what? Brought about only by the effectual working of the what? Of the Holy Spirit. Now, this change that we are talking about, think about it once again. We are told in First uh, Corinthians three sixteen that we are what? First Corinthians three sixteen we are the what? The temple of the living God and the Spirit of God dwelleth in us. The transformation we are speaking about is not a modification. What is a modification? You will take this chair or that table the way it was. By the way, if you remove that cloth from that table, you'll be surprised how it looks like, is it? How does it look like? A transformed table or a modified table? Are you a modified table? The inside is rotten, but when people look at you, at the outside, you appear as the flowers in Eden. So let us talk about the transformation. We are told that we are the temple of God. In the sanctuary, we had articles that were overlaid with gold. True or false? But then we had the candlestick, which was of beaten of pure gold. And I want to tell you something about the candlestick. You go study about it, that it had bowels of oil and it was uh, lightened by who? By the high priest. He went to dress the, 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 the lambs when he went there. There's something about this candlestick that actually in the temple, 
at top of the temple, we had what we call a Hanebaja skin at the top of the temple outside. And then it was followed by a ram skin and the goat skin. But when that light was lightened by the high priest, the temple itself, go and try it at your home with those different curtains of purples and all that. The light inside it will make a rainbow and radiate that the people could be, that it could not be contained in the sanctuary. And when the Shekinah glory came and it made that light, it was something so brighter. When it happened to Moses, when he was on the mount with the Lord, when he came back to the people, the people told him, cover your face. We can't look at you anymore. That is what the Lord wants to accomplish through us. That if he can light his light in us, it will be a light that cannot be distinguished by anyone. They will say, cover the light. But we have this modified light in that somebody speaks to us and then the light goes off. Have you ever seen that? Is that the kind of light we are having? The one that the Lord lighted himself and the Shekinah glory came on the day of atonement, no one could put it off. When Moses met with God on the mount for 40 days and 40 nights, when he came to the people, the people could not extinguish that light. Rather, they told him, cover it. If we want to know we have that light, it is the way we respond to how people react to us. Does that light get extinguished? If it gets extinguished, then know that your relationship with your father who is in heaven is having a, a problem. We should have that light that can endure and our enemies can say, touch not those people. And if it is the will of God they touch us, then our response will be the response of Jesus Christ who not lifted up his voice against him. Anyone, let us go to First Peter. We are talking about the duty of the congregation on the day of atonement, of what kind of people uh, is God trying to tell us we should be. The book of First Peter, chapter 2. When you read there, you say, Amen. And I'm reading from verse 21. The Bible says, For even what? Here unto a hidden what? Because Christ also did what? Suffered for us, leaving us what? An example that you should follow what? His steps who did not sin, neither was. Guile found in his mouth the 144. Who, when he was reviled, did what? Revile not again when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judged righteously. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body, on the tree that we being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you are done what? You are healed, and that stripes which made him shed his blood was not only for physical, but also for spiritual healing. It is also for spiritual healing. And so if we say that uh, we have received Christ in our heart, then we should not modify our life, but have what? A transformation. And so we are told, Again, we read, even in this life, it is not for our good to depart from the will of our Father in heaven. When we learn what? The power of his heart, word, we shall not follow the suggestions of whom? Satan in order to obtain what? Food or to save what? Now, this is a very, very important issue. Why does he say that we have to conquer appetite on the day of atonement? I'll refer you to prophets and kings. Why does Sister White say that we have to conquer appetite on the day of atonement? Prophets and kings.
y que and uh, this is uh, page page 184 paragraph 2 why is sister white so concerned with uh, our conquering of appetite in the day of atonement look how this arch enemy really brags about on this day that's what the world will become i'll be the ruler of what the prince of i will so control the minds under my power that god's sabbath shall be a special object of a sign i'll make the observant of the seventh day a sign of what this loyalty to the authorities of human laws will be her be made so stringent that men and women will not dare to observe the seventh day sabbath for fear of wanting what food and clothing they will join with the world in transgressing the earth will be holy under my word do we read these statements and tremble if we are just right now cannot conga appetite how who tells you we can conga in the time of trouble it can't happen it cannot happen it cannot happen is food bad you know it is food that has made us be where we are right nothing else it was not even adulter it was food something that no one could think about in the garden of eden is it maybe you may say there was no one for eve or adam to go with in adulter but think about it what has conquered men and women is food put food before somebody and you will know them and so back just some few recent years in covid the devil says the whole world will be in i will be under my control that people will not obey the sub and this we have seen with our own eyes i i told you of a situation where everyone knows this in kenya that uh, bread was being sold uh, on certain days in kenya in the covid situation is this true or false maybe you are in a very better place in a country home praise the lord for the people there but as the people in town we were here near luanda and people could not observe the sub because they had to queue for bread for the supermarket to be open to take bread because you don't know when the bread will ever come again to the supermarket and you shouldn't be eating bread unless it is baked at your home amen sometimes you look like you can throw stones at people amen you shouldn't eat bread unless it is where hey praise the lord so recently we were queuing for bread on friday and the sabbath hours reached when people are still on the queue here in luanda market to find bread and that was not even anything that was just covid but when all these things are put together in the end time how will this world look like if we have not conquered appetite it will be a hard thing to conquer appetite one thing i want to guarantee you that uh, we are told our bread and water shall be sure in isaiah chapter 33 verse 16 but how will it be made sure if only we have a relationship with jesus christ and so our only question will be what is god's command and what is his promise knowing this we shall obey the one and trust the other christians should be preparing for what is soon to break upon the world as an overwhelming surprise and this preparation they should make by doing what diligently studying the word of god and striving to conform their life to it is precept 
now. These are the art course, but I'll pass there. We looked at to be redeemed is to cease from sinning. Now, in the book of Daniel, chapter 22, Daniel 9, verse 22, I mean, uh, sorry, Daniel is shown the prophecy of uh, the 2300 days. One thing that Daniel understood is that after 70 years, the children of Israel will come from captivity, right? From reading what? Jeremiah, is it? From reading the book of Jeremiah, he understood that after 70 years that the children of Israel will come from captivity. But then another vision is given of the 2300 days and Daniel, upon hearing this prophecy, what happens to him? He faints and can't understand. No one understood the mare. That is the inner shrine vision, which was about the cleansing of the sanctuary. But then when you reach in Daniel 9.22, while he is praying and confessing of his sins, he is told in Daniel 9.22, understand what? The matter. Understand the matter. He says to Daniel, what matter? That evidently which he did not before understand as stated in the last verse of the chapter 8. Consider the vision. What vision? Not the interpretation of Nebuchadnezzar's image, not the vision of chapter 8. For there was no vision difficulty with either of these, but the vision of chapter what? Chapter 8, in reference to, to which his mind was filled with doubt and astonishment, I am come to show thee, also said the angel, show thee in reference to what? Certainly reference to something wherein he was entertaining wrong ideas and something at that same time pertaining to his prayer as it was this which he had called Fourth Gabriel on his mission at the time. Now you have to understand what was happening in Babylon. The children of Israel had dwelt into ba in Babylon, built houses, married, until they were contended with Babylon. By the time that the Lord expected them to come back to their country to rebuild the sanctuary and institute the services of the sanctuary, resume the sacrificial system, and help the world to end the sin, the people were not ready. And so Daniel is told, understand what the mat is it? So let us try to understand the matter in these last few minutes. I think I have 20 minutes. Look at... Uh, the book of Haggai. What, what was wrong with these people? We are looking at the duty of the congregation on the day of atonement. What kind of preparation uh, is God needing of us? The book of Haggai. Guy. Chapter 1. Yes. I knew there is pronunciation. Complexion. I didn't want to sound like American. Haggai. How, how do you pronounce that? Haggai. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm in chapter 1. There is a problem with the children of Israel at the time they should be going back to build the sanctuary. And so in chapter 1, it says, In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, unto who? Zerubbabel, the son of Shiltiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of Paul saying, these people say, the time is not, the time is not yet come. The, 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 the way we just say, the Sunday law has not yet come, is it? They are supposed to go back and rebuild the sanctuary, but the time has not, has not come. They are understanding something. You have to read the, 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 the history very well in uh, 
uh, prophets and kings, page uh, 573 downwards. You will get the story well that uh, it was almost time to go back, but the Lord wanted to finish something amongst them. We will not have time right now to go into the book of Ezra and, Je and Nehemiah to look into these things. But look, let us just finish at the book of Haggai right now. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying that these people say the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lies west? Now, therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, Do what? Consider your ways. Ye have sown much, and bring in little ye eat, but you have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. So the Lord is wanting this to, to go and build the sanctuary, but they are saying the time has not yet come because there were some few still, a uh, few years, so that they may go to rebuild the sanctuary. But the Lord wanted them to understand something. If you go to Haggai chapter 2, Haggai chapter 2, look at verse 11. Thus said the Lord of hosts, ask now the word, the priests concerning the law, saying, if one bear holy flesh in the skirt of his garment and with his skirt to touch, skirt do touch bread or pottage or wine or oil or any meat, shall it be holy and the priest under what? No. So if you are unclean, and you touched clean things, they became what? Unclean, is it? Next verse, then said a guy, if one that is unclean by a dead body touch any of this, shall it be unclean? And the priest answered and said, it shall be unclean. Verse 14, then answered a guy and said, so is this people and so is this nation before me, said the Lord, and so is every work of their hands, and that which they offer there is what? The people who had to build the sanctuary had to be unclean or clean people. So did they have to wait until 70 years reaches so that they go to build the sanctuary or they had to start the journey early so that they may clean themselves to be able to rebuild the sanctuary? Are we together? They had to travel prior to the ending of what? 70 years, as God gave chance to them under these kings of Medopasha. Those who had to go, had to go, prepare themselves so that they may be able to rebuild the sanctuary. The sacrifices that had to be offered in the sanctuary were to be clean sacrifices, is it? Think about this. Let us go to the book of 2 Kings 6, 7. I pray that is the verse. If it's not, then it should be passing... Kings 6, 7. First Kings 6, 7. Not, uh, when the sanctuary was being built, verse 7, First Kings chapter 6, verse 7, it says, And the house when it was in building was built of stone made ready before it was brought where? I want us to understand because if we don't understand, we are not going to take our position and exercise the faith that is needed for such a time. So the children of Israel are to go to rebuild the sanctuary, is it? They are living where? In Babylon. But they cannot build the sanctuary while they still have characteristics of Babylonians, is it? So they have to be cleansed before they start the work of rebuilding the sanctuary. Now, when the sanctuary was built, we are told that it was made ready where? Before it was brought thither, so that there was neither hammer nor axe nor any tool of iron had in the house while it was in what? And then we are told that we are lively stones to build what? A spiritual house. And so can these unclean stones build a clean spiritual house? It must be what? Clean first. Let us go to Ezra chapter 8. 
Ezra chapter 8 and verse 15. Now, this is the last verse I'm reading. And then I read, I repeat just last day, then we close. Ezra chapter 8, and in what we are in verse 15. Amen. This is Ezra gathering the people to go back to rebuild the sanctuary. And he says, And I gathered them together to where? To the river that runneth to Ahava, and there abode we in tents three days. And I did what? Viewed the people and the priests and found many of the sons of Levi who are to work in the sanctuary. But where are they? Where have they gone? Hmm? Where has this Levites gone? Who can tell me? They are unclean. They are still hang hanging in Babylon. One of them has married, is it uh, the daughter of Tobiah or who is that? Do we remember the story? He has married from the people that God said they should not. And so he is unfit to be a Levite in the sanctuary of the Lord, is it? But the sanctuary services have to resume, is it? But how can they resume? When you go on with the story in the book of Jeremiah, uh, in the book of Nehemiah, he gathers them, even in the, in the book of Ezra chapter 9 and 10, he gathers them and tells them, separate with these wives that you have married. And Nehemiah says that when he brought these people together, they were speaking half the language of Ashdod and another language which could not be understood. They could not even read their own law which they had to teach the people. Have we drunk from the world until we don't understand what Seventh-day Adventists should be teaching people? Yet the sanctuary has to be rebuilt, a spiritual house, and the bride has to be made ready. How I pray that we continue understanding our duties and we will not wait anymore until we reach at our marker points that we have put in place mark time in God, that when this event happens, I'll be able to do this. Now, who told you you'll reach tomorrow? We are only guaranteed for when? Today and sufficient is the trouble of today. Tomorrow is not guaranteed unto us. And the trouble that may come tomorrow, you may never face it and be able to overcome it if you have not learned to overcome the previous day. When we overcome today, we build a faith to be able to overcome tomorrow. And so may the Lord bless us. And may we continue praying that the Lord himself will make us ready and nothing else. May he fill you with his Holy Spirit and cleanse you and also cleanse me so that we may be able to leave Babylon, be able to rebuild the temple. They had to rebuild the temple and then they could minister to other people who are still stuck somewhere. We also are spiritual stones. We have to be prepared and then be able to preach to others who are sitting in darkness. My last point was in last day events, 179 paragraph two. This is a statement we have read over and over again, but repetition makes impression. The great issue so near at hand what? Enforcement of Sunday laws will do what? Wait out those whom God has not appointed and he will have a what? A pure, true, sanctified ministry prepared for what? We cannot wait the latter rain in sin. We can only wait for the latter rain when we are sure of the faith we have in Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless us. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, once again, we really confess of our, our weakness, our deficiency in spiritual matters. And it seems that uh, the world is so wise in their moves than the children of God. 
we pray for wisdom for you have promised that whoever lacks wisdom in James 1 5 should ask and then you shall give without upbraiding for you are a God who giveth liberally not as the sons of men and so we are gathered here Lord as your scripture says ask and you shall receive we ask that as our father you may give us that which is needful for such a time as this if we fathers of this world know how to give to our children how much more our father in heaven we praise you and we glorify you because lord it is not out of mourning and uh, uh, denying ourselves things that uh, we should be having and uh, all these things that we talk about but it's just a spirit that is conright one that can come before you and confess their sins and before we even confess you have your arms outstretched unto us. Receive us unto thyself. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.